Necromancy Guide where I will be going over all the best AFK Necromancy training methods for all levels. There are quite a few AFK training options and you can gain up to 1.5 million XP at the very best method. So the first AFK training method for necromancy is the ghostly trolls. They are located in the city of Um Troll Cave and I would recommend doing them from levels 1 to 40 anywhere in between. Do note that doing rituals it is a really important part of necromancy. So these are just some options for you to, to train necromancy in an AFK way within those level gaps. Some recommendations include the Salve Amulet E. Ghostly Trolls are undead, so this is helpful. You can also use Ghost Hunter Equipment and the Undead Perk. You'll only be getting about 22 to 35k XP per hour here, which isn't that bad considering it's for level 1 to 40. Uh, but really, you can just drink an aggression potion and just camp these ghostly trolls. Just bring your best necromancy gear, and it's as easy as that. It's a really nice method to train it at the very early levels. But as I mentioned before, you will want to do some rituals at some point. Uh, so this is just a way to AFK uh, when you're busy. At levels 40 to 70, I recommend AFKing at Anku's in the Stronghold of Security. They are also undead, so you can use the Salve Amulet E and the Undead Perk and Ghost Hunter Equipment. Enku are located in the bottom of the Stronghold of Security. You can see there are three different rooms that you can go to. The room in the northeast I prefer, especially if you're a lower level and not killing them as fast. It's a smaller room, so the Ankus will all be able to hover around you, and there aren't any ghosts in there as well, so they'll all be within melee distance. The larger rooms have ghosts in there as well, which do hit you with uh, ranged attacks, so it isn't really worth it unless you're killing the Ankus just too fast in the smaller room. But overall, you can expect to gain around 75 to 150k base necromancy XP per hour. Another really good mid-level option is Bound Skeletons. I suggest doing them between level 60 and 80. They are located north of Fort 4 and 3, or you can have them in your player-owned Slayer Dungeon, which is what I did when I was training Necromancy. They are also undead, so you can use the Salve Amulet, Undead Perk, and Ghost Hunter Equipment. Bound Skeletons will allow you to make a little bit of GP per hour, but really it's only about 1 mil, so nothing too special. And you can get around 200 to 350k Necromancy XP, depending on what level you have. You will really want to get the Spectral Scythe ability as soon as you can. You can get it at level 60, but that's only the Tier 1 version. When you can get the Tier 2 at level 70 Necromancy, then you will actually get the Hurricane ability, basically. And it's just an awesome AoE ability to have for all of these AFK tasks. It is a bit difficult recommending the perfect ability bar for everyone, but I was using the Spectral Scythe in the first slot, especially once I got to level 70 and had the uh, tier 2 version. I also had Blood Siphon uh, when I was doing this at level 70, just because I found I was getting hit fairly hard, and that's a great healing and AoE ability. Then Touch of Death, a Volley of Souls, Soul Sap, and Finger of Death. As I mentioned, you might want to tweak the bar based on your necromancy level and gear. And uh, if, if you are feeling like you're not getting hit that bad, you wouldn't really need Blood Siphon in there. And you can swap that out for something else. If you do have the Zuck Cape, of course, Death Skulls is always a great ability to have on your action bar. So it will depend a little bit on what gear you have and the level for the best action bar for you. Abyssal Savages are one of the better creatures to AFK. You could do this from level 90 to 120. You might be able to start doing it at level 80, but they do hit quite hard just because there are so many of them in the wilderness. They are just west of the rogue's castle, and you will need level 95 Slayer to fight Abyssal Savages. Since they are demons, you can use the Demon Slayer perk and Demon Slayer equipment. Personally, I didn't have that. Uh, I wasn't using that when I was training. But you can see I was getting around 800k XP per hour. This was at level 116 Necromancy. So do keep that in mind. If you are a lower level, you will be getting some less XP. Uh, but it is an excellent method to do. I was getting around 5 mil GP per hour as well. And it's completely AFK, especially if you have your Penance Aura on. You really just need to click to make sure you don't log out. 
When you get to the Abyssal Savages just west of the Rogue's Castle, you'll see there are a ton of them. So you're going to want to make sure you're protecting magic. And I was using this action bar as seen below. Basically, the Vengeful Ghost is able to heal me enough to not die. I'm then also prioritizing using Death Skulls because I am wearing a Zuck Cape. If you don't have the Zuck Cape, then I wouldn't suggest putting that in there. I'd rather just have uh, Touch of Death and Finger of Death in there instead. Then I also have Spectral Scythe. That's going to be the key ability. You're going to want the Tier 3 Spectral Scythe unlocked, which is basically the uh, Meteor ability. It's an awesome AoE ability, and it's really going to be increasing your XP per hour a ton if you have it. Then I have Soul Sap and Volley of Souls to finish off the bar. So doing this, I was able to get around 800k XP per hour. You could probably get a bit more if you had the Demon Slayer perk on the armor. Uh, and my gear isn't fully perked out. It has quite a bit of perks on it, but it's not uh, fully perked out. So anyway, this is another really great method. You can earn about 5 mil GP per hour as well, which is pretty solid. Uh, and it's one of the better ones to do. Abyssal Beasts has been my preferred AFK training method just because it's so simple to set up. You can do this from level 90 to 120, at least that's what I would suggest. And you will need level 105 Slayer to fight Abyssal Beasts. They are located west of the Wilderness Herb Patch, or you can put them in your player-owned Slayer Dungeon. They're also located in the Sandy Sand Asylum, but I highly recommend using the Wilderness location. It's so much more AFK because you don't need to worry about aggression potion. Creatures in the wilderness are always uh, aggressive, so it makes this method completely AFK, especially if you have the Penance Aura active, and you can make the 7 mil per hour and just over 800k XP per hour as well. I usually use the same action bar as the Abyssal Savages, so I have the uh, Skeleton Warrior and Skeleton Ghost to start off the uh, action bar. Then Death Skulls and Spectral Scythe, followed by Soul Sap and Folly of Souls. You can have uh, Touch of Death and Finger of Death in there as well. I did do a lot of testing between switching them in and out, but uh, I found it didn't make too much of a difference. And so using this bar, I was able to get the 800k XP per hour. The nice thing about Abyssal Beasts is they're actually really good GP per hour. They drop a ton of really great things like Noted Herbs. They drop Onyx Bolts which are worth quite a bit. Uh, and basically every few minutes, if you're just picking up all the drops, you're going to be picking up 100k or so. Not to mention they have a bunch of salvage that is going to be alked if you have the spring cleaner on you. You can bring your gem bag to pick up the uncut onyxes. And so that's really why it is my favorite AFK necromancy method, because you do get the 800k XP per hour, but also about 7 mil GP per hour. And so it's really fantastic from that point of view. Finally, the absolute best AFK XP per hour you can get for Necromancy is through Armored Phantoms. So you can do this from level 90 to 120. You will require a level 113 Slayer, so that is a pretty big requirement to fight Armored Phantoms, and that you will need it. Uh, they are located in the Crypt, just north of Fort 4 and 3. And again, they're undead, so you can use the Salve Amulet Undead Slayer perk. And the unique thing about this method is you actually need a platypus to turn it into an AFK method. So I will show you guys how to get that, but basically this method is going to get you around 1.2 million necromancy XP per hour, and you'll be able to get around 5 mil GP per hour as well. So to get the platypus, you'll want to go to the Uglog Lodestone. You will want to bring some box traps and some lavender. You can also just pick up the lavender on your way. And just head down to the beach area. And there you'll see a bunch of platypus. So you're going to be catching them. First, let's set up the box traps. So once the box traps are all set up, you'll want to light the lavender. And if you notice, when you run by the platypus, they're actually attracted to lavender and will follow you. Just run through your box traps. And the idea is that one of the platypus will eventually be caught. You can catch a uh, fully grown one or a baby one, it doesn't matter. As you can see, when they run into the trap, there's a chance of them being caught. And there you go, you have your platypus. Now for the actual method, once you have your platypus, you're going to want to head to the crypt just north of Fort 4 and 3. 
you will notice that I have my death dealer gear on. That is the power gear. And the reason for that is because the death marks, they're going to be really important for speeding up these kills. Now, do take note, it is a bit difficult to set this method up. So when doing it, just go through the Risen Ghosts, have Protect Magic on. Once you get to the next area, turn on your Protect from Melee. And uh, I also Devotion here, just so I don't uh, take too much damage. You're going to want to lure all of the Phantom Warriors around you and just bring them to the uh, eastern part of this room. Then click right there where I am clicking. As soon as you get there, you want to call your Platypus and he will come out right around you. And so right now the Platypus is actually blocking a spot for the Phantom Warrior. So only one of them is hitting you at once which is really important for this method because Phantom Warriors hit really hard and you only want one of them to be able to hit you at a time. As for the action bar I suggest you use, I recommend putting Death Skulls first with your Zuck Cape. It actually is rarely used because mostly you're using Soul Strike and also your Spectral Scythe, but it still does get activated every once in a while. Second on the action bar is Soul Strike. So this actually stuns the Phantom Warrior, which is really important for this method because again, they do hit really hard. So that's second on the action bar. Third, you will have your soul sap. So that's how you get the souls to actually use soul strike. Then you'll have your AOE ability being spectral scythe. That's basically going to be dealing all the damage and killing the phantom warriors. You will want again the tier three spectral scythe. Uh, you will end up going through a full rotation where you do get uh, the hurricane and the meteor ability off with that spectral scythe and then just to cap off the ability bar i do have touch of death and finger of death which rarely rarely are activated now using this setup you will be able to get about 1.2 million necromancy xp per hour and around 5 mil per hour if you are picking up your drops with your area loot now, if you remember back to the intro, I said you can get up to 1.5 million XP per hour, and this is true. The way to do it is using a Scrimshaw of Sacrifice. This Scrimshaw gives an increase of 50% to combat XP, except then the creatures you're killing won't drop anything. It also costs about 3 mil and lasts for one hour. So it is going to increase your cost per hour and you're not going to actually be making anything because you're not going to be getting any drops. But testing this out, I was able to reliably get about 1.5 million XP per hour. And this seems to be the absolute best AFK method for necromancy. Now, I do want to mention that the Scrimshaw of Sacrifice does not work on double XP. So if you are on double XP... Well then, just do the regular method, you'll be getting 2.4 million XP per hour and making a bit of money while doing it as well. And so those are all of the best AFK training methods for Necromancy for each level. I really hope you guys did enjoy the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more RuneScape 3 content. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.